Uh, one correction what was required is uh, uh, we have to follow the exact same procedure whatever is being provided in the documentation. One correction what I can say it is I'll show you. So when I have imported this particular design, what happened is actually, so if you see, uh, when I've imported the particular previous design, so what happened is there was a connectivity missing out between the ground plane and the patch plane. So that's a reason what we have to do is once you have imported that, We have to go for repair. Under repair, we have to go for check. And then we have to go for stitch adjacent surfaces. Surfaces. So you can see almost, almost nine surface, nine surfaces, whatever we have utilized here, were not stitched to the patch layer and ground layer. That's a reason we were getting some issues. And one more correction, what we were requiring is we have to follow the exact uh, thing, whatever has been specified in the document. So one correction which was required from the old uh, document to the new document is. So here we have created a, a material also in the document. As for the document, we've created a material and we have created a PEC boundary condition. So this PEC boundary condition will be allocated for your ground plane and also for your patch. So you can see ground strips and patches are allocated with PEC. Substrate should be remained alone. You don't need to connect any material, whatever you have created for substrate. You don't need to connect th for this. For this particular patch antenna, we have followed a unique technique. What is all about is you have to create two mediums. One medium is for the exterior medium, uh, which is only for patches and substrate. And one medium is a dielectric medium, which is for this particular surface. I'll show you how exactly it could be done. So now I have I have stitched the surfaces. Let me go to auto mesh. Let me select the surface. Let me select all the surfaces. Let, let me go for create mesh. And this resolution is 0.2 mm as per the document. Just click on create mesh and click on OK. So put it for the wire frame, flat wire frame, so that you'll get the mesh elements. OK. So here, what we have to do is we have to go to SEM window. Under SEM window, it's already in the FD. I've set it to FD only. So you can go to material editor. You can give your uh, dielectric constant, whatever you have evaluated for. Click on apply, close. And then create a boundary condition that is PEC for your patch and as well as for your ground. So allocate the materials now. In order to allocate, go to SEM part manager, select your ground strips and patches. Select your PEC material, allocate it to both of them. Substrate, you need to leave it alone. And then now what you have to do is you have to go for medium. In medium, for exterior, you have to allocate two surfaces. So whichever are facing the exterior things, you can allocate it. So patches and substrate, you can uh, put it. Click on apply. Oh, sorry, one second. So select your part surfaces, go with patches and substrate, click on OK, and then now click on apply. So exterior boundary will be allocated. And next, what we have to do is this step we have missed it out. Uh, here, you have to give your material ID. You have to click here, go to list. Under list, you can find whatever material you have imported. That material will be available. If you are renaming it, you will get the renamed text here. You have to select this material. Click on OK. So you'll be getting the material. And now here, what you have to do is you have to select all the entities, all the entities and put inside this particular material so that your particular substrate, which is connected to your patch and also your ground planes will be excited with the dielectric material properly. So for that reason, we are doing this, this until this step this common. And next we, we will be allocating the frequencies and all those things are absolutely same. So we have to go for frequency uh, since it runs for single frequency. 
whatever is been followed in the document you can follow the same thing you can click on add and apply and then we have to go for sources sources we have to go for line sources and line sources also i have already shown you the thing how to go about so just close this as of now remove your patches okay remove your patches zoom it and you can see now the surface is bit different now you can add up your materials go to sources line source select your edge by default if it is showing in the top direction flip the direction and apply so in this way we'll be applying all the line sources so it's pretty simple you can flip it and apply it it's already the same go with apply so now also select the same uh, sources line source since we are already done with that we are going with uh, some speed actually here so we have to flip the direction for all the things okay so we are done with almost uh, nine sources we have got it so nine sources we have already got it so here once you are done with the sources everyone are bit confused with multi source window right so this multi source window we have to go ahead with the excitations only on the latest uh, document we have got into the excitations part so once you are done with this uh, it's a nominal step only next one we have to go for outputs we have to allocate a far field sphere around it and click on apply so you can also go for spherical wave expansion setup so select your part ids whatever are required for your spherical wave expansion so once you allocate this you will be getting this kind of uh, denomination and then you have to go for your medium id go for list select your exterior boundary okay exterior boundary and click on apply this was one more correction which was required for spherical wave expansion after that here you are not finding your excitations directly that's the reason we have to go for single excitation here let us go for line source and select all the line sources so once you are done with all the line sources select your near field select your currents also select your far field sphere and assign your far field sphere okay so once we are done with this particular part click on apply close it so you will be getting one excitation this is also treated as your multi source window okay and apart from that uh, again we have to go ahead with output parameter select length unit it should be in terms of mm so we have to set the units in terms of mm and then we have to go about so once we are clicked about apply it's done now you can save your project at any folder so select any random folder save it and try to run this out now you can see it is running right so i don't run this already i have run it already so we have got the results also i don't want to run this so this was the correction which we would require basically whenever we were going with this particular 
flow so if you are even if you are following even if you are following this particular flow we can go about so the only correction which is required is you can follow the as it is flow however we are going about in the document and one correction we require is let's uh, initially it used to be defined in the form of source but now it is defining the excitation here also you can see we have to go for single excitation only go for excitation and then in the excitation definition window we have to give all the line sources allocate your far field sphere give your near field and currents and then click on apply that's that's what is a major difference what we have to go about now we'll try to uh, go go ahead with the other example what we have done uh, what we have to go about so i'll be going with uh, example in a detailed flow so if anybody has any doubts uh, just please uh, put the doubts for the end uh, i mean uh, we'll allocate some time for doubts and then we'll try to solve it up okay so this was the correction which was required for your particular 3 uh, cross 3 uh, patch and you know whatever we have implemented so far now let us just go for the other examples let us just uh, give it a try how we have to go about for a uav simulation in time domain solvers okay let us just uh, uh, think about how to go about okay so let us just let me just uh, take out the design file first took it so i'll just copy paste this particular file and then we'll try to go about so in order to open a new file you can also drag your file into the application window and then we'll be actually getting the original design file so once you're done with this now we'll follow the same steps as it is as mentioned in the document okay so i'll put both the regions uh, simultaneously so that you will also have some comparison study to go about so the uav is the same structure whatever we have implemented here uh, and even the frequency domain solver also it's the same 